Good. So, um, good morning, everyone. Um, the uh, this is uh, another seminar organized by BSc Education as part of the Severo Ochoa uh, seminar series. Mm -hmm. And uh, my name is Francisco Dolas Reyes. I'm the uh, uh, director of the Earth Sciences Department at the uh, Barcelona Supercomputing Center, and uh, we have uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, honor of uh, uh, having uh, Enrique Alvarez Fancur uh, talking today. Uh, he uh, he is uh, an, a, an old collaborator of the uh, department uh, related to well, our activities uh, uh, with uh, that have to do with the ocean. Enrique has uh, had been working in Puerto del Estado for many years, uh, doing an excellent work in the context of the uh, Copernicus, uh, Mori, uh, Copernic Copernicus Marine Service. And uh, he moved recently to Mercator Ocean uh, to uh, work on the, uh, uh, the Ocean Prediction Decades uh, Collaborative Center, which is part of uh, some of the uh, activities that the, uh, uh, the European community is, uh, is carrying out uh, as part of the ocean decades. And uh, uh, it would be very interesting to hear Enrique uh, talking about the uh, the plans and also the realities of the collaborative center. So the floor is your Enrique and uh, and uh, uh, thanks very much for joining us and for being available. And uh, as I said before, uh, we are looking forward to uh, receiving and hosting you here uh, uh, for a, for a meeting with the rest of the departments uh, whenever you are available. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much, and uh, yeah, also uh, go ahead with uh, your presentation. Thank you, thank you very much. It's certainly a pleasure for me to to be here with you and to have the opportunity to to uh, ex explain. Uh, what I have been doing during the last couple of years since I moved from, from Puertos del Estado and the very exciting adventure that we are now uh, moving forward in the Ocean Prediction Decade Collaborative Center. As you can see with the title of the, of the presentation, Connecting the World Around Ocean Prediction, this is the motto of what we are trying to do. And you will um, see the very ambitious and very nice objectives and initiatives we are starting to move uh, forward. So if I have to, to explain in a single slide what is um, the Ocean Prediction of the Collaborative, Collaborative Center trying to achieve, that will be the, the slide. So on the left, you have the, the ocean forecasting we have today. We have uh, useful systems. We are proud of the systems you were mentioning, Copernicus and many others are uh, quite relevant, are being used, are powerful, but we have to admit that we are far from an optimal situation. First of all, these systems are quite disconnected from, from each other. So we don't have really a technical and human community around these systems, and we don't have the technical components to really link these systems for example, on the exploitation files using downstream application and things like that. And on top of that, those systems are quite complex to, to develop, to install, to operate. So that means that on those institutions that are technologically less advanced, it's very difficult for them to, to uh, develop one of these systems. So we want to advance in a transformation, in a change of a scenario, and the ocean forecasting that we want is the one on the right, with many more systems distributed worldwide. Those systems properly connected, both from the technical and the human point of view, and those systems being more easy to implement, more robust, more based on common tools, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, for this fundamental transformation, which is quite ambitious, as you can imagine, uh, the idea is that we are going to do that in this analogy of the ocean prediction DCC vessel under the leadership of the UN Ocean Decade, taking this opportunity of the UN Ocean Decade, our capabilities of action will be very linked with the different decade actions. I will explain a little bit what is that. I will give a little bit of context of the decade in the next slide. And also the arrival of the concept of the digital twin of the ocean that is going to be very important for this integration. Then we have, as the crew of our vessel, the community that we are building around ocean prediction. I will explain how we are doing that. And our role is basically 
set the course from one place to the other. It's the one of the navigator of this uh, vessel in this in this analogy. So as you can see, it's quite ambitious, quite interesting. And I think we are doing good moves in the right direction to, to advance in this in this challenge. So a little bit of the decade, so you can have a, a little bit of the background of where we are. In the decade, we have basically two main, two main parts I mean, from the organizational point of view. We have the governance and coordination framework. This is where a dedicated coordination unit sits. The dedicated coordination unit are the bosses of the decade and, and, and the IOC. This is the coordination body of the decade. And then there's a, a series of DCCs, the Cape Collaborative Center and the Cape Collaborative Offices. Believe me, these are more or less the same. Don't, it's a small difference between the C and the O, so it's more or less the same. So these body are about coordinating, monitoring and promoting collaboration between the primary endorsement programs that is in theory where most of the action will take place. This layer is in charge really of the development. So here we are working together with a series of TCCs and DCOs, trying to coordinate ourselves with them in order to uh, promote that the actions of these programs are properly coordinated. And are, are, uh, let's say the results could survive dedicated. That's the main vision. You can see here a series of programs for C, DITO, GM Social. All these programs here are directly attached to Ocean Prediction DCC. So one of our roles is to promote the coordination of all these programs. Also, as I was mentioning, we are not alone in terms of the Cape Collaborative Center and the Cape Collaborative Offices. So there are like two kinds. <clears throat> one, <clears throat> sorry. One are the thematic, where we have a core of DCCs that are um, uh, leading the development of a digital ecosystem for the decade. This is ocean prediction for forecasting, data sharing, and ocean observing. These three are working very closely together. And we are working also with additional DCCs and DCOs as part of this network of thematic coordination bodies. And then we have the regional coordination bodies, and we have a series of one, one in the India, one in the West Pacific, etc. And these are more focused on the uh, development on the different regions of the of the ocean. So these are working together, obviously, these two layers and trying to promote the coordination between all the different programs. I know it's a little bit tricky at first sight, but once you understand it, it really makes sense and it's really, it's really powerful. It's true that it's maybe not as funded as it should be, which is a big problem of the decade, finding, moving forward, finding the money. But the, the structure is uh, quite, quite interesting in terms of, on, on the potential, on how far we can reach with this structure. So let's go back to the DCC. That, that was a flash on, to tell you that we are not alone in the decade and we are working together with many people, with the observational world, with the data sharing world, with other, with the regional DCCs in order to, to, to achieve our objectives. So to achieve these objectives of promoting ocean forecasting worldwide, we are based on two pillars. The first one is the community and the second one is the technical pillar. So first we want to build this community and second, we want to provide this community with the right tools to advance. So to build this community, we cannot be influential from Europe to every part of the world. So we have divided to take the best, we have decided to take the best of both worlds, the UNEP regional cities and the good regional alliances. And based on this, we have built our own regions to start working with. So we have assigned teams on all these regions from people of these regions. And these are starting to be our boots on the ground for the work that we actually want to do on this region. Support decade action, all these decade programs I was mentioning related to ocean forecasting. Sorry, that, that was undesired. Identify gaps and ways forward. Work on capacity development activities and advocate for implementation of best practices, standards, and tools. I will talk a lot about this in, in future slides. So basically, this is how we pretend to reach the rest of the, of the world, how we pretend to be influential in the rest of the world by working through these regional teams. We have in each region uh, found leaders. 
So, for example, in the Arctic, we have NERSC. In the Northeast uh, Atlantic is Delta Race, and so on. In some regions in Africa, it was quite complex, and we ended with a series of teams working as uh, leaders of the regional team. And then we have a steering team in each region. The steering team is in charge of managing the, the region activities and so on. And if you put together all the logos of the leaders plus the logos of the steering team, we have built during these last two years a very large network of institutions that at least have claimed their interest in participating, in helping us, in working with us. Of course, many of these institutions, this is just a collection of logos. So it's it's somehow a very nice slide, somehow a very weak slide at the same time, because this can be, this really shows the interest, but many of these people will really have not out of time to, to, to develop things with that. But at least we have this network, and we can be influential through this network in trying to move forward these, these objectives. The other pillar is the technical pillar. We only have in the community, we cannot go uh, very far away and we need to provide the tools. So this is this is where we have our technical abilities on, in, into play. So let's start with the problem. The problem is, as I mentioned, the systems are somehow technically disconnected and they are difficult to implement. That is translated that during development, if you want to build a system, you need to study a lot. You need to start basically from scratch. I know it from my previous experience at Puertos. Also, the core services are quite disconnected, not like in the meteorological world, where they are able to share the data very easily. And then during exploitation, well, you don't have many possibilities to use common tool for validation, dissemination, and exploitation. So we have the opportunity, which is dedicated. Dedicate as a game changer for a new scenario for ocean forecasting. And here we have also to be harnessing the digital twin of the ocean opportunities. So this new technology that is going to be a, of great importance for the integration of, of systems. So what we want to do is look, I wrote here towards a solution. It's not the final solution, but we are doing steps towards a solution. What we have done is build a team. We call it the ocean forecasting of the same team. We built that one and a half year ago or two years, and we have been very, very active working on the technical side. And we have designed a new architecture, an ideal architecture for building an ocean forecasting system based on standards, tools, best practices, etc. This is about to be published. I will show you some results later on. We are very excited because the result of all these two years is going to be visible before the end of the year. We are really close to publication of all these things. And the idea is that all this architecture will be able to inspire people, to inspire dedicated program development targets. So the idea is that people will grab in, into this, maybe slowly at the beginning, faster with time, if we keep on uh, advertising this. And we will start developing systems according to all these best practices, tools, and standards. And that will facilitate the integration into digital tool and tool, uh, digital twins. And also it will facilitate that many more people could join the family of ocean forecasters because it will be more easy and you will end with more robust systems following these standards, tools, and best practices that we are identifying. I'll talk more about that later. This is the, the, the team that we have built, 40 experts worldwide. We meet, uh, this is a picture of a meeting we had in, in Toulouse. And if you, uh, we are collaborating very closely again with the programs, and those are the institutions where all these experts uh, belong to. So again, it's an international from all the uh, different parts of the world network. And we have been very active moving forward into this uh, uh, results that we are about to, to publish, and I will explain later on. So that's the second pillar, the technical pillar. Just to give you a little bit, a little bit of flavor of the kind of things we have been doing. Uh, this is this is the result of our work. Okay, we, we we sit down and we say, okay, before moving forward, we need to understand where we are. So we did a work of exploring. Uh, it's not something of highly uh, statistical significance, but this is an illustration based on polls on where we believe we are with uh, uh, ocean forecasting today. And it's very, very interesting because we did 
to uh, we submit the polls. It's almost the same poll, but slightly changed to do different targets. One is the experts. One is the uh, developers of the systems, and the other one is the users. And it has been quite interesting to see how the perception of the systems are different in the experts and in the in the users. And funny enough, the expert ads are much more critical with our systems today. Uh, so this is this is the result of the experts looking into the into into this. Uh, you see here basically green means good, red means bad, and you see global, regional, coastal, and the different variables that we are uh, forecasting. And you can see that the experts are quite satisfied with with, for example, the waves. No surprise, and they are quite unsatisfied with our ability to uh, forecast biological processes in the ocean. This is kind of devastating our, how bad we believe we are doing in, in, in this. And it's also very interesting to see that we believe that we are doing worst when we get close to the coast. In, in uh, global models, things are more or less okay, but when we are get, getting closer and closer to the coast, and you can see this here, this is global, this is regional, this is coastal, all these good news on the global scale are slowly disappearing when we go when we go to the to the coastal scale, where we have a great dispersion of, of, of the results and in general less satisfaction on what we are able to achieve. And this is in full contrast when where the experts believe the systems are being used. So these are the applications and these are the variables. And the blue dot means that the system is used for something. So that this blue dot, blue dot here means that sea level is used at global scale for disaster risk reduction applications. The interesting thing of this plot is that, remember, we believe we are doing worse on the coastal, but we are using basically everything on the coastal. That means that we are doing worse where we need it more at the coastal scale, which is a very interesting uh, result. And also, not, it's not an unexpected one. It was a little bit more unexpected, this other result, when we have seen the, uh, how the users evaluate us. This is uh, 200 users replied to that. So it was quite a good response because there was many questions here. And survey, you know what we will do when we receive a survey. But here we found 200 very nice people that replied to, to this survey. And we found that the opinion in general is much, much uh, better with respect to the systems than the opinion that the experts have of their own system. That is most likely due to the fact that uh, the experts know where to look into the problems. And the users mainly need sometimes some kind of semaphoric information. I should do this operation. I should not do it. And they are not that interested or that or that worried about the small details of the system, about the high accuracy of the system. To have a general information for them is sometimes sufficient to do to, to do the work. So in general, they are quite satisfied, much more satisfied than the developers of the ocean forecasting systems, which is a very interesting result, I, I believe. So this, this gives you a framework of what we are, uh, where we are and what we are trying to achieve. And um, the rest of my presentation is a little bit about how we are trying to achieve this. And the rest of my presentation is about this virtuous loop that you can see here. I'm sure that there are many, many ways to promote ocean forecasting around the globe, but we have our way, and this is uh, explained in this virtuous loop. Basically, we start with the knowledge. The knowledge is fundamental for anything. The knowledge on about physics, about biogeochemistry, about everything, and the basic knowledge of what numerical models is are. This is condensated on a publication which is called the Tooth's Guide. That was published two years ago, Expert Team of Operational Ocean Forecasting Services. It's a good publication. <clears throat> and here's where we are compiling all the basic knowledge about ocean forecasting. 
Then once you, once you have the basic knowledge, you uh, need to know how to build your system. And here's where we are going to publish, as I said, it's <clears throat> weeks away from being published now, the so-called architecture guide. This is a wiring diagram that we have built on how to build an ocean forecasting system. If you don't know how to build this, <clears throat> You get this architecture guide, and you call it, you will have a good guideline on how to wire everything and how to build your system. Once your system is is built, you have to operate it. And here we are preparing a, a new product, which is the operational readiness level guide, which is basically a collection of best practices. This gives as a test to teach people how to operate and upgrade the systems. Of course, if you are able to operate the system, you want to integrate and provide services. And this is where the digital twins are coming into, into place. And we are doing, again, I'm repetitive in this, not alone, but we are doing this in collaboration with the rest of the decade uh, programs that are uh, looking into, into this. And in the center of everything is the more important asset, which is the community that we are building. This is very much in the center of everything. And this is the people moving forward and the people benefiting from all these activities. So I will explain this, this loop, uh, starting with the uh, community. For the community, we are, uh, of course, focusing our activity into our recently launched web page. We are still suffering few bugs on this web page, so I'm not extremely happy yet about it, but we are solving this. And I guess that before the end of the year, it will be a, a, a very nice web page. We are, I think it's nice already, but I am a little bit critic uh, with, with, with ourselves in this. Um, we have to improve here a little bit, but at least you can now connect to the Ocean Prediction DCC website. Uh, I delete the address here, but it's unoceanprediction.org. You will see at the end of the presentation. And here we have the forum. The forum you can enter and uh, you can ask questions. You can contact the community. You, this is this is going to be an active place. It's still not very active. We have to do more advertisement of it. We have to push forward. Um, but at the end, in a period, it will be active and we will have a lot of things going on here. And we have the Atlas which is where we are going. This is a mock-up. The actual Atlas is still not that much populated, but we are starting to have a lot of models. We have now like 70 operational forecasting systems already uh, included in the, in the Atlas. Um, this is a who is who. This is, this is the, the place where you are going to find which are the persons, which are the organization, and which are the ocean forecasting services available worldwide. And you can contact them, you can find uh, people for projects, you can do whatever you need related to finding uh, your community here. So this is the directorate of who is who uh, and uh, will serve exactly for, for that purpose. It's, it's a matchmaking uh, utility in, at the end of the day. So we're building this community around this web page, around the forum, around the Atlas. And we hope that this will be more and more active with time. This, these things take time, but it will be more and more active with, with time. Then we have the knowledge, as I was mentioning, we have the tools guide. If you don't know it, I recommend you to, to search in Google for it and download the, the tools guide. This is a, I think it's like a 400 pages book where we uh, were able to uh, summarize all the basic knowledge that you need to start working on the on the world of ocean forecasting. And what we have done now is to convert this ETUFS guide into a wiki site. So the idea is that we will be able now to uh, gather the knowledge of additional people that wanted to contribute here. And we will, from time to time, every four or five years, the idea is that a new version of the ETUFS guide will be published with all the uh, new things coming from the community that will be able uh, to um, uh, upload their contents through this new wiki site. So this is already available and we are ready to, to, to receive additional contributions into the tools guide for further editions of, of the guide.
Then we move to the next uh, step of the virtuous loops, which is the development of ocean forecasting system. And for this, we have, as I mentioned, the ocean prediction DCC architecture, the architecture that we have designed and uh, will be a, a guide for those wanting to implement an ocean forecasting system. The idea here, obviously, is that this architecture in the following years will be a comp uh, will be complemented. We have uh, additionally the software itself. So all the tools that we have identified here as needed. The idea is that we are going to to build this as uh, elements of the of the architecture. So here you can see that. Uh, those are, those are the, let's say, large scale diagram. We have different kind of architectures. I have a plot here too. Ones are like digi without digital twins. This is the Copernicus architecture basically today. This is one where we have the digital twins working for integration. There are other architectures. Those are the high, high level uh, diagrams. And then you have for every diagram, all uh, the, let's say, detailed diagrams where you see process by process what is needed to do an ocean forecasting system. So this is the really put into paper the experience of many years of me and many other people working on, on ocean forecasting systems and putting into paper how we believe this has to be done, to be properly done, to be stable, to be well organized, to be interoperable, and so on. So for somebody starting a new system or somebody that wants to upgrade a system, an operational system, this is, I think, really, really a very valuable uh, asset. And in the future, we hope that it will be accompanied with, with the software itself. Uh, uh, we are starting now this work. This is The, the rest is ready to, to, to be published. This is starting now. We are working as part of the, of the architecture in definition of data standards. Being data standards, something very, very broad, not just, oh, we are storing net CDF. No, we are not referring to that. We are saying in the data standards that you have to store quality information, you have to store the manual, you have to store information about the vocabulary that you are using. What is temperature for you? Is this skin layer temperature? Is uh, uh, adiabatic temperature transform temperature? What is this temperature? The, the metadata, and so on. So we are uh, starting a work now, um, which is going to be uh, quite challenging to try to figure out some uh, definition of the data standards for ocean for ocean forecasting. Once you have your system built, and remember also the, the target will be in the following years to actually convert all these diagrams into an actual architecture that you can download and install and is consistent with it, with the with the, with the architecture that you have on paper, you have to operate your system. And here we have built uh, this. This is about to be published. We launched it to a peer review journal. Now the two reviewers have been very, very, very nice. And uh, it's the first time in my life that I got a paper even without a minor review. So it will go direct to publication. That's kind of surprising. And uh, we hope to have it published before the end of the year. And here, what we have done is to put together the best practices that we believe are needed to operate one operational forecasting system. And we have divided this into three categories, production, system validation, and product dissemination. And we are doing a series of questions, a test, to evaluate how well you are doing in your system in production, in system validation, and in product dissemination. So for example, if you end having a very good qualification in production and system validation, but you, ha you have a bad qualification on product dissemination, you know where you have to act, you know where you have to improve, and you, you know where your system needs uh, evolution. So it's a way to introduce best practices. It's a way to promote the evolution of ocean forecasting. And also it's going to be a way to endorse services to join common frameworks. Imagine that you have a digital twin in the future, and you want that all the data coming into your digital twin from other institutions is reliable. You can say, okay, you have to be minimum three, three and three in your system. If not, we cannot welcome you on the family because you are not good enough in one of these critical aspects. So in, in detail, what we have done is 
put all this list of best practices of things that you have to do. Uh, for example, a help desk operating working hours is available to support users. Many, many different things. At the beginning, they are very easy to, to, to fulfill. And more and more, they get more complicated and you uh, grow through this ladder of conditions in the three numbers. And at the end, the last questions are really tough. It's basically almost impossible to have a system so perfect that you have five, five, and five. We have tested this with the Copernicus systems, and the qualification is typically 4.5 4 in every in the three digits. So it's 4.5, 4.7, 4.3, for example, typical qualification of a Copernicus service, which is the state of the art. These are the best systems around in terms of reliability. But we want we did it that on purpose to challenge people and try to to to, to reach perfection on, on, on the five. Finally, the last step is the the integration. And here we are thinking, of course, into integrating into digital twin of the oceans. I know you have activities with Mercator with the European Digital Twin of the Ocean. This is this is an important aspect. And also, we are working together with the other, as I was mentioning at the beginning, DCCs and DCOs on ocean observing and in data sharing to promote uh, an a ecosystem, a digital ecosystem for the decade. And the digital twins will be part of this digital ecosystem for the decade. So this is a work, let's say, more in paper than we have still not really uh, results beyond the fact that uh, we want to work together and we want to to do not work on the ocean prediction world with in isolation from the ocean observing world and the data sharing world, which in the decade is lead, led by these two DCOs. And of course, again, I'm being repetitive, working together with all the decade programs for CED, best practices, and so on. So in conclusion, uh, this ocean prediction DCC due to, to, because it's a decade collaborative center of the decade, uh, we'll work together with, with the partners in, in the decade, with the programs, with other DCCs, with other DCOs, to promote ocean forecasting and its application during the decade. We are building this community around the regional teams, but we don't want just to do blah, 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 and we want to move forward. Um, we want to go also on the technical side, and put uh, together the experience of many people in building these assets to promote ocean forecasting. The architecture that is teaching you how to, how to wire a system, the operational readiness level that is teaching you how to operate a system, the Atlas, which is a matchmaking tool, the forum, which is the place where you can uh, interact with your peers and more to come in the future. So I invite you to register at UN Ocean Prediction webpage and uh, welcome to the community in the moment that you register into, into our site. So this is it from my side and I'm open to, to questions if, if you feel those are needed. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Enrique. I was unmuting my, myself. I'm here as well with Joan Jort. Uh, 